Our I Love Dayton series spotlights what is unique about Dayton, and Hair Arena certainly was that. From its name, a combination of Wampler brothers Harold and Ralph, to its storied history, but that seems ancient history. Two News Today anchor John Seibel has what might be new life in Trotwood. At the moment, we are standing in front of Dayton's newest sports arena, the Hera Arena on Shiloh Springs Road. This is the building which will house the Dayton Gym. And one of the most glorious eras of Dayton sports history was born. Hera Arena wasn't originally designed with a sheet of ice in mind, but the startup gems needed a place to play, and a match was made in hockey heaven. At the drop of the first puck, the gems were hit. Players like Guy Trache packed Hera Arena with over 100,000 fans the first year. Nicknamed the Mouse, Trache went on to play for six NHL and World Hockey Association teams, yet Dayton was his favorite stop. I think the gyms were probably number one. It was, it was like home. What made it so special? Um, probably the fans. Diane Trache remembers those electric early days with fans packing Hera. Over 100,000 in the first year, and that trend continued as the wins came. Back-to-back -back championships in 1968 and 69, and a third in 1977. Within 12 years, the Dayton Gyms and Hera Arena were the toast of the International Hockey League. But then it became stale. It didn't happen all of a sudden. It wasn't so much what was happening as what wasn't done. Fred Burkhart says the mixture of failing maintenance and a shifting marketplace was the recipe for economic disaster. Everybody ready to sing along? Not even the biggest musical acts like the Beach Boys, Prince, the Eagles, and Van Halen could slow that slide. The concerts, along with car shows, dog shows, and Hamvention, kept the doors open. Yet the slide became a free fall in 2007 when the real estate market crashed. The inevitable was knocking at the door. And then in 2016, the doors shut for good. Hera was nothing more than a skeleton frame of memories, flatlined. But there may be life within those walls after all. Garrett Day LLC bought the arena and the 25 acres it sits on. A 250,000 square foot mess filled with strewn furniture, stripped copper, and ripped ceilings is now a space of hope. To have engineering firms in there analyzing the quality of the building, see if we can utilize it for different options and so on. We're going through that process right now. Height says the building has good bones, and there's a carrot. Another 110 acres surrounding the site. Height says they are in the final stages of foreclosing on the extra acreage. Major development. We're already talking to major companies right now. Jobs Ohio is looking at this property as a major, as a major site. Uh, I mean, it's huge. The hope is soon, perhaps within months, and the life restored. It can be again. Hope to turn a site too painful for Diane Trache to even drive by. I don't go past because it just makes me <laughs> feel really bad, sick. I think it's, uh, it looks the way it does. Back into the gem it was nearly a half a century ago. The opening game will get underway against Port Huron. John Seibel, 2 News, working for you. For Dayton hockey fans here. Heights says as soon as the treasurer's office approves the foreclosure, a development deal will happen quickly. He adds that he hopes the arena will stand, but the future of the arena is solely up to the would-be developer.